so glad and honored to be able to join together today with our Grandview family and friends. It is indeed an exciting time to be in the body of Christ. Grand Pastor Dennis and all of our staff um, greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to know today that we miss you. We miss, we miss being with you this morning, but we are here to just um, minister the word of God to you this morning. We're here to, to let you know a few announcements, and we're here to just be a blessing for you. Announcements this morning, um, I we need to remind you that um, like our Facebook page, as you already have, probably, if you're watching this, and we also have um, YouTube pages, grandviewchurch.com um, and Grandview Student Ministry. So if you subscribe to those pages, you will be able to see any upcoming videos or live videos that we are putting out just for you. The Grandview Student Ministry is a new YouTube page, and it was designed by, by Seth and Zach. And it is, it's a really good page um, for our children and youth. So it's from grades 1st through 12th. And they will continue to, to put on videos, maybe funny, maybe teaching. Um, but make sure that your kids are connected with those videos. And um, it will help them to stay connected with their children's pastor and youth pastor. If you have not received our email, we will be putting out emails almost daily, if not daily, probably every other day. But if you have not received that from us already, please email the church at gview at grandviewchurch.com and we will be sure to put your name on our email listing. That way we can keep connected with you because we're here to serve you and we're here to, to meet any need that you have during this time. Our offices are open currently, so just call ahead because we may be in another building. Um, we want to make sure that we're here when you arrive. Several people have asked me about um, tithing. Can they send their tithe checks into church? Yes, you may, because out of our obedience to the Lord, um, tithing is something that doesn't go away just during crisis. Um, it's even more important that we stay obedient to God's word during this time. So, yes, bring your tithe. You can drop it off at the office. We would love to see you. Or send it through the mail to 1019 Cedar Street. Something that's new that we're, we're starting tomorrow, the churches in Quincy, the body of believers as a whole in Quincy, um, we're going to begin to, to pray. It's not that we're coming together as the body, but we are going to begin to pray at 6 p.m. every day. You may hear some church bells ringing at 6 p.m. every day to just remind you and indicate to you to stop and pause and pray for our community. So as the body of believers in Quincy, we are uniting and praying for this city. That's important. Amen? Don't forget, keep reading your chapter a day. This is of utmost importance. If you don't know what chapter you're supposed to be on, maybe you don't have one of our flyers, please just contact the church office and we'll get you one as soon as possible. But remember, read a chapter a day, pause and pray. It's very important. I was reading um, recently because of reading a chapter a day in Philippians 4 verses 4 through 9, and I've read these scriptures before in many different translations. You, you all know, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. But when I read it out of the Passion Translation, um, here's what it says. It says, be cheerful with joyous celebration in every season of life. Notice the word every, every season of life. Let joy overflow, for you are united with the anointed one, Jesus. Let gentleness be seen in every relationship, for our Lord is very near. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. 
Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Christ Jesus. So keep your thoughts continually fixed on what is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always, following the example of all that he has imparted to you. And the God of peace will be with you in all things. Tell him every detail of your life and fix, focus, fasten your every thought upon him. That is your challenge today. As we go forward through this time, put God first. Fix your attention on him. Because if your thoughts are, are being distracted from many different places, our, our main focus needs to be on him. And then what will happen? The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be able to connect with the Grandview family in some dimension today. As we're here, the staff and elders have gathered together for this opportunity to still be able to minister to you find a way to bring God's word, but also to be able to connect us as that spiritual family that we are. And I know that Seth has already shared a word with us this morning, and Lisa has ministered the word to us, and elders, if at uh, any time feel like they have something from the Lord that we need to share, um, certainly this is an opportunity. Uh, we intentionally are not trying to just duplicate a Sunday morning service, um, because without you here, um, it's totally different. And so what we're doing here is connecting as the body, drawing ourselves together. And with that, I encourage you, if you are on Facebook there or you're able to, um, post a note or let people know that you're there. Um, it's not so that we can count how many people liked us, but so that others in the body of Christ, uh, others that are part of this local church family, can sense um, our gathering and not this isolation that we're going through at this particular time. And as pastor, I want to say thank you for taking a few moments this morning um, to be able to gather around and to hear the word from, from us here at Grandview. I know that you could be listening to any of the most profound leaders, spiritual leaders, and pastors in the world today on the internet, and yet today you've taken this time um, to be able to be with me and us at this particular time. So thank you uh, for that. And it's those times like this that we really sense the significance of the local body. Uh, we, we sense the absence of being able to gather together, and yet, um, as I was reading through Paul's writings over and over, when he would say, I'm absent from you with the body, but I'm present with you in the Lord. And so there is still that spiritual oneness, that, that unity that we are sensing, um, that we are the family of, of the Lord. We are the local church right here, right now, that we are standing together and that we're believing together. And I want to just encourage you um, that as pastor, I'm, I'm not here to give you just a, a nice little comforting message just to, to be calm and be safe. At this time, Grandview, this is our finest hour. This is when we need to stand up and be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We may be confined to our homes in many ways, and yet our prayers are not limited to our rooms. Our declarations of faith are not limited to the ceilings. But we at this time should rise up as the church, the victorious, triumphant, overcoming church of the Lord Jesus Christ, where we need to be diligent in our prayers. We need also to be declaring great statements of faith over our community, not just our homes, but expecting God to be able to move in this day and in this hour. I think it was Bill Johnson that made this statement that the word is still true. Greater is he that is in you than the virus that is in this world. And we need to rise up at this time and make sure that we understand God has prepared us for this time. He has equipped us with his word. He has filled us with his spirit. And it's not just so that we can be safe in our homes, but so that we can rise up and be the church during this hour and have faith on the inside of us and declare to a world around us that is looking not just for leadership, but they're looking for the God that you have, the whole great one that's on the inside of you. I was just talking in the office the other day, and I thought it was interesting to remember this verse that we started with at the beginning of the year was Acts 20.20. 20. 
If you want to take just a moment, uh, you can look it up, Acts 20.20. Maybe you still remember um, what it said. But in Acts 20.20, we started this year with Paul's writing to the church. And he says, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed to you and taught you publicly and from house to house. Didn't realize how prophetic that verse was going to be. That we at Grandview, we endeavor to preach the word of God and teach you the word, not just publicly, but right now we're doing it from house to house. To be able to encourage you and strengthen you to do what you need to do during this day and this hour. And so as good citizens, we are sheltering in place. As good citizens, we are staying at home and keeping our social distance. And I understand that to what we need to do at this particular time. But I also understand that as good citizens of the kingdom of God, that this is the time that we need to be the church. This is the time that we need to be the fearless church that is rising up and following after God's word and his will in this time and in this hour. This is the time that we go back to our simple uh, 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 little bookmarker that we would started off the year with, that we're going to let God's word challenge our thoughts. We're going to let God's word build faith on the inside of our hearts. And we're going to let God's word predict our future. I want to encourage you right there to pull your little uh, bookmark out if you haven't looked at it for a while and to be able to just understand that God's word is going to predict my future. That it's going to declare unto me the, uh, the truth and it's going to give me strength and hope for what lies ahead. You know, it's at times like these that I seem that the Holy Spirit draws me oftentimes to the Psalms. And it's not just for a place of comfort, but as we go to the Psalms, it is a place of instruction also. And so today, as I share God's word with you, um, that it's not just a four-point message. It's not just something that's got some fluff that will get you through the day. But I want to share with you a message of what we can be instructed on God's word to be able to do in our world, do in our lives right now, that we are doers of the word and not hearers only, so that God can work through us and can accomplish his will in our lives. I'll give you a few moments, but if you could, get your Bible out. If you're writing down notes, you can write it down and look it up later. But turn back into the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, to a very familiar portion of Scripture that we oftentimes read at funerals, but I want to read it today because we're not expecting funerals. We're expecting the power of God to transform and change lives. Let's look at this in a light of where we're at today and what we're going through. Let's look at God's Word because God is always the same. He never changes. We can find in God's word that he is consistent even in times of chaos. That we can find from God's word stability and clarity for the day in which we are living as we simply just go back to God's word. I'm not here to give you something new. I'm just here to remind you of what we must do in this day and age. That we cut the fluff and we get back to the basics of believing the truth of God's word. Let's look at this, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. One translation says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I think that we not only want to read this in a sense of understanding who Jesus is, but a declaration that he is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the one that has the responsibility and the power to protect, lead, and guide us in this day and in this hour. So what a great statement of faith that we could have here. What a declaration from God's word that stirs on the inside of us. That peace that Lisa was talking about that surpasses all natural understanding. That, tra that challenges our thoughts, builds faith on the inside of us, and also predicts our future. What does the future hold? The future holds this. The Lord will still be my shepherd in the days ahead. And I will lack nothing as I follow after him. Notice as the scripture goes on, he says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures or pastures of plenty. He leads me beside the still waters. And this day, I know that right now things are fairly calm. We don't know what the days ahead will be. We don't know how things are going to go. But we do know this, that God's word will still be true, that God will still be faithful to us, and that we can have confidence that he will lead us into peaceful times in our lives regardless of the chaos that may be going on around us. In verse 3, it continues on. It says, he restoreth, my, uh, excuse me, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. The Lord will lead us. He will guide us. He will provide for us. Let's understand it is for his glory. 
this is a time for us not to just see what we have as resources. This is a time not just for us to see what I can accomplish and what I can do. But this is a time for us to be able to say the Lord's going to demonstrate his favor in our lives. His peace in time of chaos. His provision as we go forward. And his divine protection in our lives. Now verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. In this day that we are walking in, where so many people are fearful of death, so many people are fearful of virus and, and sickness and disease and chaos that is around us, this is where we must be the, the, the courageous church. And we will say, we will walk through some of these same situations. We'll walk through some of these same dark valleys and dark moments. But that's where we will have a declaration of faith. I will fear no evil in my life. I really sense as I was praying for the service today, I really sense that it is time for the church to get back to making those bold confessions of our faith. The fact is that many people are making confessions of their faith right now. It's just their faith is very weak. Their faith is small. Their faith is limited. It's time for us to, to make sure that we are building our faith from God's word. And if we have faith in our heart, then it is going to come out of our mouth. And I just want to challenge you. Are you making those bold confessions of faith? What are you talking about? Are you sharing how dark the valley is? Or are you saying, I will fear no evil? Why? Because the Lord is with me. Your rod and his staff, they comfort me. No matter what I'm going through, I've got the comfort of God's presence. I've got the guidance of God's word. I've got the impartation of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. There is nothing that can cause me to be afraid with God's word and God's presence in my individual life. So there may be some dark times that we will go through, but let's get faith in our hearts before we do it so we'll have uh, faith coming out of our mouth as we're going through it. He goes on in verse 5 and he says, Thou preparest a table before me even in the presence of my enemy. It's incredible, isn't it? To think this, that, not, that oftentimes we're just wanting God to wipe out our enemy. We're often wanting all problems to go away in our life. We're often praying that we'll never go through difficult times or struggles. We're often praying that everything will just be smooth and easy as we go forward in life. But the fact is that there are times that there will be dark valleys and there will be an enemy that surrounds us. And yet in the midst of all of that, we can have confidence from God's word, faith coming out of our mouth, that even in the presence of our enemy, God's provision will be there. I encourage you today. I encourage you not to look just at your cupboards to see how much you have in there. Not look just at your stock or, or, or your, your, your retirement to see what's in there. Look to the word of God and be encouraged with what he said he will do in your life and will prepare for you as you go along. Because not only is his presence there with you, but he goes on and says, Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. There's more than enough in your life. He's not just talking about naturally that you're going to have more than enough. But God's presence prepares you to do more than what the, assistant or the, the circumstances that you're facing will call you to do. God's provision in your life will prepare you so that you will have more than enough anointing. More than enough of his word coming out of your mouth. More than enough of his peace in your life. It is always going to be abundant, overflowing, consistent in your life. If we'll keep following after him. You see, that even in the midst of the valley, even when your enemy is surrounding you, even when problems seem to be all around us, we can know this, that the Lord is with us and he is equipping us to do. Not just be, but do. I want to pause right here and just ask you, what have you been doing? What has the Holy Spirit been leading you to do during these days? What has the Holy Spirit been, been challenging your faith to rise up? What prayers are he, what is he, he wanting to, to, to speak through your lips? What declarations of faith that maybe are even, some, uh, even, even, even challenging your thoughts at this time of what God wants to do? Are we just praying over our house or are we making declarations over our city? Are we just going through the formalities or are we saying that, no, we're going to rise up and in the name of the Lord, these things will change. This has gone far enough. We can stop these things. We can repel. What is it that God is calling you to do that's more than you ever imagined because of his anointing that is upon your life? You know, we end this sixth verse chapter here and it says, 
Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Folks, we're going to get through this. And God is preparing us and prepare the church for a time such as this. He is the consistent one. He never changes even when the world's in chaos. His word is that stability and that clarity that we go back to during these difficult times. The psalmist here reveals to us what we must be doing as we continue to be good followers of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to make these declarations, determination, and be able to be used of God during this time. Quickly turn over, and here's another good psalm for Psalm 46. Psalm 46. I'm certainly missing some of your amens, and that's right, in service today. Um, but I believe that, that uh, you're responding, hopefully, there in some way. Maybe if you're home all by yourself, you can get up and shout, maybe do some, some dancing that you don't normally do in church. But the Word of God is true, and it should be releasing us. It should be encouraging us. You know, if, you're, if you have someone, we do this often in church, maybe you do have someone in the home there with you, just turn to them, tell them God's going to be faithful. Tell them God's going to be faithful. If nothing else, you can look me in the camera and say God's going to be faithful. But he will be faithful during this time. My question is, will we be faithful? My question is, will we be faithful doers of the word? Will we be faithful followers of Christ during this time? You know, uh, will we be faithful and, and, and diligent in our prayers? Will we be faithful to read our Bible every day, read our chapter and pause and pray? Will we be faithful to be led by the Spirit, uh, to reach out and to minister to people during this time? Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Before we encounter problems... God is already our strength and our protection in our life. God is our refuge. He is present tense already. We don't have to ask for his help in one sense. He's already there ready to help. He goes on in verse 2. So we will not fear when earthquake comes or when mountains crumble into the sea. Let the seas roar and form, foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. Selah, stop and think about this. He's saying when everything's going on around us that seems to be beyond our control, earthquakes, uh, the ocean, the, the mountains trembling, when all of this is going on, remember this, God is a present help in time of need. He is our refuge at this time and strength. I think it's important for us to pause here and see those two words. Refuge and strength. If we're not careful, we get in survival mode. We just look to God as a refuge, a place that we go and hide out, a place that we can just shelter in place and wait for the storm to pass. But he reminds us that he is not only a shelter, but he is also our strength. We need strength when we're going to go out and overcome. We need strength when we're going to go out and do something. We need strength to be able to stand against the attacks of the enemy. We need strength to be able to go out and minister to those that are in need, maybe have lesser faith than us or, or in problems that they're facing and don't know how to get out of it. We need strength that comes from God. So I'm encouraging you from God's word here that we not only look to him as a refuge, a place of safety, a place of, of protection, a dwelling place that we can go and, and wait out the storm, but in these times of waiting, that we are getting uh, uh, strengthened. We are sensing his supernatural strength that comes upon us. As the psalmist said in, in, 20, in verse 20, or chapter 23, that his anointing is upon us. His ability is upon us. His strength is upon us. And that we're able to go out and do what he has called us to do in this day and this hour. You might say, well, pastor, we're limited. We can't go certain places. We can't do certain things. We have to stay six feet away from people that are around us. In some ways, I understand that, and yet our prayers are not limited. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. The centurion, remember, said, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Where are you sending God's word during this time? Where are you delivering the word of the Lord to people that are fearful, people that are hurting, people that are sick, people that need help in their lives? What are you doing? What is that supernatural strength empowering you to do during this day and in this hour? What declarations are you making over our cities, our communities, 
uh, the town that you're from. I appreciated someone from Grandview the day I was talking with them, and they said as they wake up at night, several times over the night, they're just declaring God's healing and power over the city that they live in. What are you doing when you wake up? Are you fearful? Are you concerned? Are you worried? Or are you declaring God's word? If you need that supernatural strength, then spend some time in God's word and in God's presence. You see, we're just getting back to the basics. God's been preparing Grandview for a long time of just teaching the word and hosting the presence of God in your life. And when we understand that the presence of God is with us, it transforms and changes us. Let me read this too out of another translation. God is our strength and refuge, always ready to help us in time of trouble. Isn't that encouraging to us today? God's always ready. He's always ready. If you're with someone, turn them and tell them, God's always ready. If you're making notes, just put it down. God's always ready. God's always ready. What is he ready to do? He's ready to help us in time of trouble. Too many times people think God's always ready to judge us. God's always ready to condemn us. God's always ready to hurt us. That God's sending this, this virus to bring judgment on this world. I want you to know that this virus is not from God. This is not something that God has sent. But I want you to know that in the midst of the chaos that this is causing, God can use this to awaken people to the need for God in their life. And you've got that God on the inside of you. You have those answers in your life. So I encourage you, find ways. Maybe it is by sending a text. Maybe it is by sending an email. Maybe it is by calling someone. But find some way to encourage people that God is a help. He's ready to minister to them. Now, verse 2, listen to this. So we will not fear when. Now, when I was writing out this message and thinking about it in my life, I just put a big, long blank there. If you're taking notes, maybe you just want to write down that. We will not fear when, and then just draw a line. Maybe you want to draw it for a couple, uh, a couple lines. When, when what? When anything comes against us. It doesn't matter if it's a new virus or if it's an old fear. It doesn't matter if it's a personal panic attack that you're having or a pandemic experience that the world is having. No matter what it is, we will not fear when, and you can fill in the blank, whatever it is. Why? Because the Lord is with us. He is the one that brings us this peace and the stability in our lives. He is the one that transforms and changes us as we are doers of the work. God is our protection before we encounter the problems of this world. This has not caught him off guard. His word is still true. And we're going to be doers of the word in this day and in this hour. We are going to be encouraged by his presence. And as we shelter in place, I want you to know as believers, we've looked at it before, but the best place to shelter is in Psalm 91, when we shelter under the, under the, the wings of the Almighty God. Psalm 91 says... Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Then he goes on here, and listen to this, verse 2. This I declare about the Lord. Here we go. Someone spending time in God's presence. Someone who has rested under the shadow of the Almighty. Someone who had sheltered in place in the presence of God, where they've gotten along with God, and they've been consumed with his presence, when you get in God's presence, you come out with a fresh declaration of faith about your God. You come out with a, a fresh declaration of because you know who he is, you, you know his heart, you know his desire, where we, we start to pray the, the, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not as a ritual, but there is a, as a declaration that comes out of that. And, and he comes out and says, this I will declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge and my place of safety. He is my God and I will trust in him. For he will rescue you from every trap. Man, that's the confidence that you get after spending time in God's presence. He goes on and says, and protect you from deadly diseases. That's what the word says. After you spend time sheltering in his place, and you have this declaration of faith, you come out and you start saying, he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. Folks, I'm not opposed to, for hand sanitizer. I'm not opposed for, for staying six feet away from someone, but I want you to know that the one we need to put our trust in more than anything else, 
Our faith needs to be in God during this time. And he is the one that can deliver us and keep us from any deadly disease. Now, we won't take the time today to read the whole 91st Psalm. I, I encourage you to spend some time in it, praying that 91st Psalm. We, we'd sent out in our email just recently some scriptures for you to be able to know how to pray in this time. And praying 90, the Psalm 91 is one of those prayers in there. But he goes on in verse 4, he says, He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Folks, I want to encourage you during this time, spend extra time in the Word. His Word is your protection. His Word will shelter you, it will armor you, it will provide for you during this time. Spend time in the Word, and, and it will not only shelter you during this storm, but it is going to empower you to be what you need to be during this time. We know that God's presence, God's presence in our life is not limited to a building It's not contained to a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. But we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to stay full of His presence so that we can resist the temptations of this world, whether it would be the temptations of fear or the temptations of sickness and disease. That we repel them, that we we resist them, and we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit in this day and this hour. That we make sure that we're not focusing on church attendance but on being the church during this day and in this hour. There is powerful blessings, powerful blessings of spending time in God's presence by his word, by worship, and by just dwelling in the presence of the Lord. You see, when we spend time in God's presence, we're just more aware of God in our life. What a powerful thing. What a powerful thing to walk through your day just aware of God's presence, whatever you're doing. What a powerful thing, just to be aware of the fact that the Lord never leaves us, never forsakes us. What a powerful thing that our thoughts often go to the Lord because his thoughts often are on us. When we spend time in his presence, we are are more confident of his protection. We're not asking, where is God? We're saying, we're thankful the Lord is here. When we are confident of his presence, we have trust in his word. We We know his word to be true in our lives. And it starts to flow out of our mouth as that two-edged sword or that shield of faith that we need in our life. And when we are spending time in the Lord and we're confident of his presence, there is a bold confession that is coming out of our mouth. We just keep coming back to this today, folks. What is the confession of your faith? The confession of your faith reveals the condition of your heart. And if we're going to have a bold confession of faith, then we have to have a great confidence in God. We ought to be in the Word. We've got to spend time with Him. But when we spend time with Him, it transforms and changes us. It changes our lives. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, This I will declare about the Lord. So here's my assignment for you, Grandview. Write this down. I will declare of my Lord. What are some declarations that the Holy Spirit would want you to make in your life? Maybe you could divide it down into some different categories. What would he want you to declare over your life, over your family, over your home? What would he want you to declare over your church family that you're a part of, even though we may not be sitting in the same room, but we're still on the same mission together? What is it that God would want you to declare over us during this time? How about our cities, our towns, communities? What word are we declaring over them? It it has to be more than just, God, don't let anybody get sick. It's got to be, Lord, let people come. This will be a time to to come to the saving knowledge. May this be a time of of harvest. May this be a time that that when we can gather again, that the churches are not just full for a Sunday, that we're not just uh, rushing to get maybe a a quick Easter service together, but there's a a lasting effect of this. There was a lot of people that went to church after 9-11. There was a lot of people that went to church for the next couple of weeks. But then when the crisis was over, there was no need for Christ in their life. I want to declare over our homes, our our, our church, over our communities, that when this crisis is over, that we have found we need Christ in our life every day. And we want to dwell in his presence. What does God want you to be declaring? What statements of faith 
need to be coming out of your heart? And maybe what maybe needs to change that's coming out of your life that lines up with his word and his will. As we've said, we at Grandview, we're here for you. We're believing God to work in your life. We are praying for you and declaring God's word over your life. That we're not just going to make it, but we are going to be overcomers in the midst of it. That we're not just going to get back together and act like nothing happened, but we're going to be stronger because we've come through this trusting in God and we're going to see his word working, declaring his word. We're going to come through this thing with a new level of faith that fear is not going to be able to control us, that natural things are not going to limit us, but that we understand just how fragile life is. And we may live a long time, but there's some lost people that are fearful and don't know how long they're going to live, and we need to reach into their lives. May this stir on the inside of church a fresh sense of evangelism, well, we're declaring this, that there is a great harvest, and we're going to be those laborers that are going to reach into that harvest for the kingdom of God. Now, as we bring this to a close today, and as I said, we're not just trying to reproduce Sunday morning sermon. We're just wanting to come into you with a message that's going to stir in your heart. I want you to know that the staff is, is really, we're actually here in the room. The elders are here in the room. We're believing that God is working in your life. We're believing not only for protection, but we're believing for divine encouragement for you to do ministry during this time. That God is going to use you supernaturally to be able to do his will. That we're praying that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is how his will works. It works through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that we're a part of. And so he is going to be using you. Now, if you need us, we're here. But what we are expecting more than your needs is your testimonies of God, how God is using you. So encourage us. Uh, call us. Send us an email. Let us know what God's doing in your life. Let us know not only how we can help you, and we're here to do that, but we, I want to know how God is using you to help others also because that's what the church is all about in this day and this hour. We're believing for God to work in you. Now, my time is up, and I thank you for yours. But I want you to know during this day and hour, God's power will be seen in your life for his glory. God bless you. And from Grandview Church, we're here to serve you together. God bless you.